Hi everybody. I'm working on something right now in which I need to measure about 1500 volts on a high bandwidth scope probe, but I don't have a 1500 volt or anything more than that scope probe. Well, I do, but I don't want to use a 20 kV or anything special like that. Just want to design it for exactly 1500 or 2000 volts or so. So I figured I would modify an existing probe, in this case the P6122, really old school 1980s Tektronics probe here. It's actually labeled on the side of the probe itself, it says maximum 500 volts peak. So I figured I would quadruple that rating by adding some extra resistors uh, and a couple picofarads or so on the tip of it and then add some extra capacitance down here in the compensation box and maybe tweak a few things. So that's my plan and of course it helps to know exactly what's inside. So I took apart the compensation box and, the, and separated the cable. Here you can see I got the cable hooked up to an ohmmeter and we're looking at 190 ohms. It's not you know a clear coax cable with a minimum resistance wire in there. They're, they're, it's actually designed to have a certain DC resistance and um, and I also measured about 42 picofarads uh, between the center conductor and the shield of that coax but basically right here is the, uh, the circuit board inside the compensation box. This is the, the probe end and then this end goes into the scope and so you got a couple of pots here. Those were set by the factory and the user serviceable um, variable capacitor is this green thing right here. You got the inductor, little blue capacitor there, and another resistor. And those are all clearly depicted here in the schematic in the probe manual. Here's the inductor, a couple of pots, and capacitor, resistor, capacitor. That goes to scope. And then this end of it here, this uh, 9 mega ohm resistor and 10.4 pico, picofarad cap, that's this little thing right here, this tiny little ceramic surface mount style component. Let me zoom in. So right there is just uh, the resistor on top, just a carbon film strip on top, but on the bottom, that's where we get all the fun stuff going. That's where the, uh, the capacitance is and the capacitance tuning. This camera doesn't have very good macro, so I gotta use some alternate methods here. All right, there we go. The um, the left side that goes to the cable towards the scope, and the tip of the probe is hooked up to the right side. And you can see there's all these little pads, metal metal pads on the top of it. And the three on the left, the three largest pads, have been uh, laser etched out. They they used to be connected to the the main strip on the bottom and they've been laser etched away so that they're not connected anymore whereas the other pads looks like five smallest pads on the right those are still connected and um, that's how they would have fine-tuned this capacitor to be exactly 10.4 10.4 picofarads or whatever other capacitance that they need and it got me thinking you know this is such a very precision re device and uh, I was just thinking of putting a 20 or 30 mega ohm resistor on the end of it, on the end of the existing probe. And, but that doesn't look the case anymore because I have to take capacitance into consideration too. And it has to be very finely tuned capacitor. It's got to be exact. So since I have a whole box full of these probes, I might just take apart a bunch of them and stack all these all these RC combinations, all these little chips together, put four of them in series, and then make some minor adjustments, put some extra capacitance on the compensation circuit, and we'll see how that goes. So here's my shelf of scope probes and accessories. You can see I got a whole bunch, and in fact, let me come back to here, and we got two boxes full of these P6122s and 21s, 10X probes. They've been sitting around for many years, or I should say decades, and it looks like some of them are finally going to get 
put to a good use. And the reason I've got so many scope probes here in the first place is because whenever you buy new scopes or new any kind of equipment, they always come with, or they, they usually, they should come with the probes um, if the probes are not too expensive. But, um, you know, just ordinary scope probes, they always come with new scopes. But when the scopes are old and decrepit and you get rid of them, we all, there's always the, uh, the probes that get, that get left behind. Always the same thing with power cords and USB cables. It's just easier to, to keep, the, uh, keep all the wires and accessories than it is to keep the equipment. So I'm just going to take off the cap. The ground lead pulls out and the uh, coax easily comes out too. So what I'm going to do Try to pull the, the pin off of here. And look at that, the whole thing comes out. So this one's a little different construction. You can see it's blue. There's the resistive film and the capacitor portion has a blue coating on top of it. But that's no big deal. And of course that whole thing is inside a, a brass pipe, brass tube going it ends right about here. From here to there is the uh, the brass shield. So I'll get a few more of them and then I can very easily stack one on top of the other just like that. And, um, and all of those are going to fit inside a pen, plastic pen tube, a Bic pen, and then I can wrap some shield around this thing and keep that grounded and I should hopefully have my, myself a working 2kV high bandwidth scope probe. Well here's a little surprise. I got my three 9 megohm resistors inside the plastic tubes here, but this other one I took out of a probe, same probe, same model number, but probably manufactured in, at an earlier time. It's got the orange thing is a nine, the 9 megohm resistor, and that's hooked up to the it's hooked up in parallel. It's got one of its um, leads going through this thing, which is the coaxial capacitor. It's just a ceramic tube with metal plating on one side and metal plating on the inside, just like it's, it's a coaxial capacitor. And the reason they would use this is because it's very easy to fine tune it to a very precise capacitance. So I'm just going to stack all these up like that. They just happen to fit so conveniently like that one inside the other and then those three will go inside the tube and then also on a probe that I haven't taken apart that's going to be my fourth 9 megohm resistor and that's going to go on the end like that. And we'll see how that works. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to take the cone piece off of the tip of the pen and we'll see if this fits. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. It stays snugly in there. I don't need glue or anything else to hold it in place. Okay, so here's all the pieces. We got the, the pen tube with aluminum tape wrapped around it. Here's the three probe tip assemblies all stuck one inside the other and taped together so they don't fall apart and there's a plastic spacer here so that this portion of it will stay centered in the tube so I can stick this one inside of it and then I got a spring wrapped around the shield of the probe here and then that the end of the spring will come down and then loop around the outside and make contact with the aluminum shield on the pen tube so let's stick it all together. Oops, pressed too hard and it actually came out the tip here. So let me put that back in. All right. Hook up the ohm meter. One lead here and the other lead the coax connector on the other end and we get 
53 meg ohm. That's a little higher than I was expecting. Okay, it's all good now. We've got 36 meg ohm here. It's exactly what I was expecting because now I just have it hooked up to I got the lead going directly into the probe itself here. So basically got four 9 meg ohm resistors and nothing else other than the uh, capacitances that are in parallel with each one. Here's the test setup. Got a function generator here with 1 kilohertz and 20 volt peak to peak square wave. And there's a scope right there. Here's a, a newer probe that I'm comparing it to on channel 1, the yellow trace, and channel 2 is going to be the blue one. And uh, you can see they're both perfectly identical to each other. And if I zoom in here on the time scale, Got 10 nanoseconds per division, and you can see how close, how close to each other they, they really are. But that's just the new probe by itself, 10x probe, and also 10x on the old probe. That's not with my adapter on the tip of it, so I'm going to put that on and see how it looks. All right, well... The attenuation is certainly greater. That's to be expected. I'm not concerned about that. But what I want to make sure is that the capacitive effects are the same, that the response is the same. The rise time on the coming out of the function generator is 5 nanoseconds. And whoa, look at that. You can see here, down in the nanosecond range, they're very close to each other, but when you zoom out into the microsecond or millisecond range, it's a big difference. And if I try tuning the cap down here, the compensation cap inside the box, let's see what we get. Yeah, I can't quite make it. That's probably the highest amount of capacitance right there. So I'm going to have to add some more capacitance to it so I can make it a, a clean square wave, flat, flat top square wave going all the way across. Well, apparently I was wrong. I got the LCR meter going across the variable capacitor, and you can see if I turn it either way, turn it the other way, capacitance always goes up so I had it not at the maximum but rather at the minimum this whole time I thought I was going to be adding capacitance to it but it looks like I'm going to have to unsolder this thing take it out and then put a smaller variable capacitor in its place so here's the original variable cap that I took out and it's rated for 5 to 30 picofarads um, and I replaced it with these other two caps in series. I had to cut a trace on the board and then I mounted the two of them like that in those locations to match up with these two holes that were already in the case. And each one of these is rated for 4 to 36 picofarad, so the two of them in series I can get anywhere from 2 to 18 picofarad. And I also put in a 12 meg ohm resistor right here from the scope out from the probe output to ground and that's just there to go in parallel with the one meg ohm resistance of the scope input uh, for 920 kilo ohm and then that's in the voltage divider with the 37 meg ohm or so and all that works together to a voltage division of 1 40th so if I see 10 volts on the scope, then it's actually going to be 400 volts that I'm measuring. So here's the results. It's looking a lot better. You can see that the, the, the uh, DC linearity is looking pretty good. Here, this is on the 10X probe, this is 5 volts per division, so 0, 5, 10 volts. And then this is going to be the 40X probe, so we're looking at 4. 4 volts per division, so we got 0, let me start here, 0, 4, 
eight and then halfway up there that's 10 volts. So that looks great, but this little dip right here does not look great. I got both of those caps tuned to a minimum and that helped bring up this portion to almost to where it should be. But this dip right here is probably going to be controlled by this RC combination right here. So I might have to do something to that in order to make it a little straighter on the square wave. I took out that tiny little one picofarad capacitor and put the probe on the scope and nothing really changed. There was still this dip right here. So then I replaced that capacitor with one of the variable ones that vary from 4 to 36 picofarad. And as I turn it, as I increase the capacitance, you can see there is a dip, not really, you can see it, it's not really centered around here, but more or less around there, closer to the, to the leading edge. So that dip may have been primarily caused by stray capacitance inside the probe, inside the compensation box. So I'm going to have to think of some other way to fix this.